Hi guys, today I want to show you how to use conditional logic in Spline in order to create more complicated uh, loop animations. I've encountered a really big problem and there was no tutorial, nothing on YouTube, so I decided to make one and it took me actually a month to find time to do this. So what's the challenge here? I had a project where I had to kind of visualize these two guys over here, the cubes, fill in this big one, big cube, and but they will have to trigger these lines to change to yellow and then these all cubes to become tall and once these guys leave the cube everything has to fall back. So this in my project symbolizes that once my client is um, coming to their clients and performing the service for them, injecting themselves into this company. The services of this company's, uh, company are evolving, are growing and stuff. And once you take away my client's service from their client company, um, basically everything goes back to normal to, and basically where they were before. So I had to visualize this in a very small and lightweight and um, a very kind of um, simple animation. Um, so the challenge here was to actually loop it because in Spline you can loop um, certain things but here I'm looping complex things and I use conditional logic to operate all this animation and we're gonna go right now uh, from each step what I did and how I set it up. Where well, I'm gonna recreate this, but I will show you the settings I used and uh, I'll see if I can actually get this file somehow uh, into the library or into the Discord uh, channel um, and just can have it. But I'm just gonna see how to do this in a sec. Okay, so what do we have here? I have these two cubes over here and they, first thing they need to do, they need to fall here <clears throat> so they have base state and they have down state and the same one has base state and down state here. So first action is we need to trigger at the start an animation uh, transition that brings this little guy from base state to his down state. That's the first thing. Same goes for this little man. Same, same same line transition at the start. This is my trigger that starts everything. He goes down. Very easy, simple. Okay, once they are both down, what I need to do? See, these are turning yellow. So these lines also have states. First state is white and then the next one is yellow. So the conditional logic here is once... Um, <clears throat> once this bottom cube changes to his position down then lines are changing their state from base to state to yellow right what happens next they change the state to yellow and now all these uh, cubes over here they all perform the same action they become tall all of them and they have the, exactly the same transition, everyone apart from this little man. So they have conditional logic when lines are changing to their second state, they become yellow, then these, this cube and everybody else here, they change to so tall position. So they become tall, right? Just for the sake of this, the else one is, you know, uh, else is they are just falling back and we will see that this cube becomes uh, comes from tall to their, his base state if the first action doesn't happen so if the lines are changing back to um, white all these guys are dropping back to become very short like here okay this one is um, special in this role because he has three states base state and the short state is exactly the same so his conditional logic is as follows when lines are changing to state when lines are changing to yellow then do an action 
and the section is it grows, right? Else, this cube is changing from tall to its third state, which is called short. Now, let's see what we've got here. So these guys, they have one and two. They have conditional logics, two conditional logics applied to them. So what you need to know, remember that the starting action was to just bring them to the bottom, yeah, bring them down. Next conditional logic is saying us that if this orange cube over here becomes tall, now I know because this is the tallest cube. If you if you look at this once more, let's look at it once more. This guy is the tallest among all of them. So I know once he becomes tall, I need to trigger these two go back. So once this little orange cube becomes tall, then I need to trigger an action of this bottom cube to go to his loop state. Okay, simple as that. What do we have here? We don't have anything here. No else action. Fine. Same goes for this one. If cube, the orange one, let's see. Yes, the orange one is going to his tall state. Then the top violet cube goes to uh, its loop state. Right. And then I apply another conditional logic layer on top of all this because I have the action to bring them all down, then I have the action to bring them up. And then I need the action to bring them down again, because this down action is actually uh, triggered by a start of the scene. And this is used only once in all this loop that you've seen on the, um, while I was showing this. So once this little orange cube goes to his state, which is called short, I need to trigger these guys. Go back from loop to down. So let's see. Loop is exactly the same as base state. Down. So from top back to bottom and that's going to trigger everything, every little change here again. This is how I loop it. So, uh, so we said that uh, once this cube becomes short again, I need these guys to go down again. And it seems easy, and oh, maybe it's not easy. <laughs> okay, but there was a little problem with this scene, and I was really struggling to, sh uh, to solve it. So please watch until the end. So the the reason behind this one is being slower than all the others. Let's look at it again. It is slower than all the others. See? It goes down slower than the others. And there is a reason behind this. Because if it, it goes down faster, we will see this. Okay, let's see. How fast is this one? Let's see. 1.4. Okay. And how fast is this one? Two. Let's just change this to 1.4 right now to see what's going to happen if I'm just going to do 1.4 here. And let's see here it's also two. Okay, let's not change the... Uh, him becoming tall, what it really means is him becoming uh, short again. So let's change this to 1.4 and see what will happen. See, these violet cubes don't have enough time to finish their action. See, there is a huge gap here. And I was like, okay, what's the problem? Because all of these guys that I have here have exactly the same transition. And then I realized that I need to make this move slower so that these have enough time to finish the transition to go up and fill in their states that I have assigned them. There is not enough time for them to do this. 
So once I did it, I put uh, the two and let's see how that behaves. Okay, they go back. So they managed to finish their transition and now they go back. And this is why this one, this cube is the most important one. This cube is my golden trigger. So just, just to summarize, this little exercise actually helped me to achieve certain complex loops in my scenes. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to record more videos about that because in real projects, I was not happy with how uh, simple loops are working. I needed actions to be triggered by other actions. And conditional logic is awesome thing, it's awesome um, animation technique. And it's, it's really interesting to look at the animation from this perspective. It reminds me a little bit about uh, the code and development, which is really cool. So yeah, uh, I hope you liked this video and let's watch this animation once again. And uh, let me know in the comments if you were able to reproduce that and um, I'll see if I can get the file somehow so that you can have a source file and you can copy it, etc. But um, really, really hoping that um, you will succeed in your conditional logic animations. Thanks, bye-bye.